Hello, Donna from WebEx Events here. In this video, I'll guide you through creating a branded app in WebEx Events. A quick note before we get started. We recommend that apps are submitted at least six weeks before the event, so the app is ready one month before the event starts. This gives you time to test. Also note, unlike event settings, the app settings can't be updated instantly after publishing the app. Updates must be sent to Apple for approval. In the navigation bar on the left side of the screen, click My Apps. Click the Create App button located in the upper right corner of the page. If you've never built an app before, don't worry, our process makes it easy. There are just four pages or steps App Basics, App Branding, Configurations, and Review. We'll start with App Basics. To begin, let's upload an app icon. Keep in mind that this is the icon users will see when they search for the app in the App Store, so it shouldn't include a full logo or tagline. The dimension should be 1024 by 1024 pixels. The app name is the main text for the App Store listings. Remember, a branded app can contain more than one event or community, so be sure the app name accurately reflects this. The app label can help clarify or complement the app name. It's like a subtitle for the app name and should offer a very short description of the app. Because Apple doesn't allow the app name and app label to be the same, you'll need to enter something different in each field. They can't match. Notice the app preview on the right. This updates as you enter information so you can see what the app will look like on both iPhone and Android. The app description is where you describe what the app is all about. Often you can pull the description from the event website or craft around three sentences to two paragraphs. We recommend including the company name associated with the event as this helps with Apple approval. And remember, the first sentence of the description is the most important. Warning! To prevent the app from being denied, we strongly recommend that you don't mention payment for the event or include direct links to ticket purchase sites in the description. The home screen name is the text that goes below the app icon when it's on your phone's home screen. We recommend using the app name or an abbreviation of the app name. Before we continue, let's look at an example of the WebEx Events app and a branded app on a mobile device. There are two apps here. The WebEx Events app icon with the short home screen name WebEx Events and the Renergize Learning Summit app with the logo and short home screen name Renergize. Back on the App Basics page, click Save and Continue, which takes us to the App Branding page. Before submitting the app, you can go back to App Basics and change any of the previous items. The first option in App Branding is the theme color, which is an accent color for the app. Click the color field to select a color or enter a hex or RGB value. Let's enter a hex code and click outside the modal to close it. The splash screen is the image that displays for a second or two while the app is loading. We'll need two separate splash screens because of the varying dimensions for different phones. To upload these, click the Upload icon, drag and drop an image onto the modal, adjust the image as needed, click Save, and then click Upload. The background color field surrounds the splash screen image if it's loading on a device with an uncommon screen size. Best practice is to match the color to the theme color or splash screen. Here are some examples of splash screens. They range from being very simple to having a lot of design or even including a sponsor logo. Let's return to the WebEx Events platform. Below the splash screen area are the sign up and login options. By default, email is the only option toggled on. You can enable any combination of email, social accounts, and single sign on or SSO login options. 
Simply select Yes for any options that should be available to the app users. To rearrange the enabled social and SSO options, click the two lines next to the toggle and drag it in your preferred order. When users open the app, the enabled options appear in the sequence specified. Keep in mind that SSO, or Single Sign-On, lets users log in with an existing account that's already managed by your company. If you choose SSO, this will be the only login option, so all app users will be required to have an SSO account. Overall, if you have any questions about which of the sign-up and login options to choose, reach out to us. Let's toggle WebEx to Yes and continue to the next page by clicking Save and Continue. The Configurations page includes instructions around setting up an organization's Apple developer account. It usually takes anywhere from one to four weeks, and sometimes longer, to get this set up if you don't already have one. We build the Android app as well. Only Apple requires that each organization set this up now. In this example, the Apple Developer account is ready, so click Next. Now we'll enter the developer team information. Enter the exact Apple team name and team ID and the technical contact person. This is the person from your company who's responsible for your organization's developer account. Click Next and our system checks that we have access to the Apple Developer Account. If you haven't invited WebEx Events to it yet, we have documentation in the WebEx Events Knowledge Base explaining how to do so. When the system confirms, click Continue, and the last page lets you review how the app will look to users. Unlike the other content in My Events or My Communities, any changes to these items under My Apps don't update instantly after submitting the app, so it's a great time to get team input, double check, and proofread. When you're ready, click the Submit App button, and our engineers will start building it. From there, the App Store will be available in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store in 2 to 14 days. You'll see that this building status will change to processing. We have an article in our knowledge base about all the different app statuses. You'll get email updates throughout the process and can check the status at any time in the Apple Developer account. You can also come back here to update the app to the latest version or submit changes. When you do that, we'll submit the app and it goes through a similar processing period during which the app will be available. Check out our FAQ article how do I update my app after it's published? For more details. Now that the app is in processing, we can go to My Events or My Communities and work on building out the content.